This is a dub siren that I've been working on and its uh, working name is the Odyssey Dub Siren. And this breadboard prototype has just a few controls on it and it uses three 555 timers and a couple of dual op amps. Uh, it has a, an envelope generator, a VCA, a main oscillator, an LFO and it's also buffered as well. So the next stage was to build that into an enclosure. So this is the next prototype and it has all the controls on and uh, it's got a die cast aluminium enclosure and I'll just go through some of the controls on here. So you've got a trigger to trigger the sound, a drop which drops the LFO, there's a, an on off switch which is to switch on a continuous mode so you don't have to hold the trigger down and then there's some toggle switches to switch on uh, each of the LFO shapes so you've got a square triangle there's the main pitch knob there and then there's the rate of the LFO and there's also a range which is like a, um, a rotary switch which you can use to select different ranges for the, the LFO rate and on the back here you've got the power switch, main power switch uh, audio output and there's a, also an audio input that you can use for modulating uh, modulating the siren and there's a couple of LEDs on there, there's a red one on the right there which lights up when you hold the trigger down and then the green one here which is the, the LFO so it just kind of shows you the, the rate of the LFO so if I just turn that up there we go. So I'm just going to plug this in and we can have a listen to it. There we go. And without the LFO switched on, you just get the plain oscillator. The good thing about the uh, amplitude envelope is that you don't get any click or any bounce from the button. So so it's nice and clean. And there's also a pot on the circuit inside so that you can uh, change that, you can adjust it so you can actually make it so it's a bit sharper. If you turn it all the way down it will click a little bit and if you turn it all the way up the uh, envelope is really soft and the rise and fall time is, is a bit slower. So it's kind of like a, a preference so you can kind of set that to get the, uh, the best envelope for your, uh, well just change it to taste really. And then you can switch on an LFO. So that's a um, triangle one. And you can uh, change the rate. I'll just switch it on. So that's continuous. The switch for the continuous mode as well is also hooked up to the um, to the envelope and VCA. So, so that won't click either, which is good. Um, so if we just change the range there, so it's a bit faster. Um, maybe we'll put the square wave on, turn the pitch up. A bit more maybe. get that kind of classic high-low siren and then there's this drop button here so you can actually drop the, the LFO and that's quite good when you're using the um, triangle so
other thing that you can do with that is let's turn the rate down a bit. So. <laughs> So what you can do is you can guarantee that the um, that the LFO is, uh, starts at the same place. So you can hold the drop down and then um, lift it and then let go of that while you press the trigger, and you know that the LFO is going to start at the bottom. <laughs> Let's uh, slow it down a bit more. So I'm just triggering that as the LFO is moving. So every time you start the sound, it's kind of starting at a different position than the LFO, but you can hold the LFO so it starts in the beginning. That's good for keeping the LFO synchronized, and um, yeah, and the range is quite goes quite far, so you can. Yeah. And you can also have both uh, square and triangle waveforms on the LFO at the same time. I call it squiangle. And the last thing to show you is the modulation input. So I'm just going to use my um, wave shaping test oscillator and plug that into the modulation input. Switch that on, and now we should have extra modulation. <laughs> Okay, let's just mess about. <laughs> 